Good evening, everybody, and welcome once again to the Midnight Ride. I'm your host, David Carrico, and once again, we're going to be taking you into the midnight hour with cutting-edge conversation and topics. And tonight, we're going to be talking about something that's going to be a historic event a historic event in the history of mankind, this rolling out of the 5G network. And our program tonight is entitled Armageddon and the 5G network. And this is something that I don't understand. I don't understand the 5G network. And I think a lot of the people that are talking about the 5G network don't understand it. And that's why tonight we're going to have someone on that does understand it. And uh, we're going to be talking about what this means with Bible prophecy and what it means for believers right now. So tonight we have back once again Scott Hensler. So Scott, welcome once again to the Midnight Ride. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to passing the information on that I have to help everyone comprehend what we're dealing with. Yeah, and this is a huge event. It's a huge event that nobody will escape the effects of. And it plays, I believe, a huge role in the enemy's game plan for the last days. So go ahead and take us on the midnight ride, Scott. Armageddon and the 5G network. Okay. Well, let me set the stage on who I am so you understand how I understand the technology. As a deliverance minister, as someone who deals with the demonic, who deals with the spirit realm, I come from an engineering background. Uh, I worked for Motorola. I worked for General Electric. I did contract work for Intel and Microchip and, and some of the others. And so I've been in electronics. I've been in radio. I've been in electrical for a very long time. And I got into deliverance about 18 plus years ago. And the effects of how the demonic acts on humans uh, was just as interesting to me as the effects of electromagnetics to humans or radios or communication, TV, and so forth. And as the years have progressed here, dealing with targeted individuals, dealing with sonic weapons, dealing with energy weapons, dealing with psychotronics and voice to skull, and also those who have schizophrenia, those who hear voices and tones and noise, you know, and so forth, it's all coming together. And unfortunately, this 5G is a game changer for all of us. And the very fact that they're even considering this is, is absurd. It's insane. And it shows uh, the narcissistic uh, attitude or behavior against humanity. Now, when, when you have this type of attitude towards humanity and you're willing to do such great harm that this uh, technology does, now, that also means cell phones, cell phone communication, cell towers, the, the actual devices themselves have been um, very, very hard on our tissue, on, on our nerves, on our minds, on our bodies. And so we're already beat up. And now we're going to have the assassin come in and finish us off. And that's really what 5G is. And so when, when I talk about the technology tonight, I want you to understand that, and I'm going to be bringing some examples, too, of how uh, radio waves were used to contact, uh, like, necromancy, clairvoyance, talking to spirits, people thinking they were talking to the dead, but that's not the case. And so what we have today is the ability for uh, technology to be handed over to the demonic. And so with supercomputers, with um, uh, quantum computers, there is a difference between the two. And now implementing that with 5G, along with CERN and some of the other devices or technology that's used for changing our world as far as the structure of atoms, as far as the structure that we have around us called the, the electromagnetic fields. Um, now, there's a difference between uh, regular magnetic, like, like we have from the Earth, and then generated electromagnetic and so as I kind of bring it all together, understand that the devil's in the details. And that's unfortunately the case. And so as we move forward, this is an instrument that will bring the demise if we don't, you know, stop it now. So there you go. All right. 
So we're talking about technology with an attitude. And yeah. uh, the uh, wh what is the attitude behind this? These people that they just have a disregard for humanity. They um, seem to be this attitude of the secret societies that people are just uh, the cattle for them to use and um, they have no real value for human life except that it furthers their own end um, the way it is the way it seems to me yes well greed money you know the love of money being the root of all evil but it goes a little deeper than this this is a part of genocide this is a part of controlling the mind uh, causing our DNA to alter and change. And so it's an evil act. And, of course, you know, the Georgia Guy Stone's telling us that they want to remove six or seven, you know, billion people off the earth and get it down to 500 million. Well, this would be one of the processes. Now, along with chemtrails, putting metals into our body, making us conductive, making us more susceptible to radio waves, cell towers, and 5G. So let me... Um, you know, since since, uh, since we understand that evil does what evil is, and there's no negotiating with evil, this is what they do, and this is how they're going to to finish it out. So when when we're around electromagnetics, now there can be light, uh, low frequency, there can be low energy, there can be high energy, there can be high frequency. There's a whole band of spectrum to deal with, from sound to radio to microwaves to infrared to ultraviolet. Uh, gamma and x-ray. So as we're exposed to this radiation, it usually comes in short uh, increments. But what we're dealing with now with cell towers and 5G is a long-term effect that will be at us at 24-7, 365 days a year. Now, when we're subject to this type of energy, and I'll get into exactly how 5G works here in a minute, that our body is in trauma state. It, the, the hydration of our cells is altered. Um, the, the proteins are kept from feeding our, our bodies. Our DNA is unraveled. This is a slow kill or soft kill long term, but in and itself is the next generations that we really should be concerned about because our chromosomes are being damaged. And so if you have pregnant women or you have women who have not bared children yet, uh, their, you know, their DNA, their chromosomes are going to be damaged. And so their children will suffer. We have autism off the charts. We have all types of diseases. And by the way, our immune system is, is affected heavily by this. And so all the diseases that our immune system has been able to hold off, whether it's been a cancer, whether it's been the plague or or tuberculosis or any of the others, without this immune system, all of these diseases are gonna come back. So it isn't just frying us with radio waves, it's also bringing on the diseases that uh, we have worked so hard over the centuries to eliminate. So uh, do you have a question before I get into the, the actual technical aspect of 5G before I go? Well, no, I just have a comment, a lot of things. Um come to my mind as I hear you discuss this, but I know you deal as we do with um, SRA people that are literally split in their soul because of trauma. And I believe, and I know the people we're seeing uh, are just off the chart in the numbers of people that are experiencing this. And I believe that the electronic bombardment is going hand in hand with the increase of people that uh, have splits in their soul and are multiple. I think the two are directly linked, and I just wondered what you thought about that. Well, absolutely. Again, I mentioned trauma. Now, our brains act in a bi-directional um, sequence of thought, you know, emotions, how, you know, our brains fire, the synapses, but it's in a coordinated effort. Whenever you take electromagnetic energy that is oscillating, uh, back and forth with high amounts of energy, then you're overriding the thought processes. You're actually causing the neural connections to break down, to be overloaded. So if you have somebody that's already traumatized, if you have somebody who's um, 
uh, dealing with uh, divorce or dealing with other matters that are, you know, stress to the system, trying to, to come out of that while you're being bombarded with cell phone, you know, the coming 5G, and we're also including satellites in this too because the energy that they have bring, been bringing down onto us have been in this high frequency of 5G. And, and so, yes, the, the amount of, of uh, trauma, the amount of um, identity disassociation disorders are off the charts. And in fact, the last time I was on the show, I, as I mentioned to you, I got uh, uh, overwhelmed with calls again. And, and yeah. most likely it's going to happen again. And, sure. and, and here we are as, as God's people who have been given all power and all authority against the wiles of the enemy have been programmed to stand down. And now with the, the energy weapons, and that's what this is, re regardless. Anytime that you use something against someone else and you cause harm, it's a weapon. So by definition, 5G cell phones are weapons. In fact, weaponized cell towers, uh, we, we can maybe get into that a little bit. But a as, as we move forward, we're not under the protection because we're still under the curses. We're still under the, uh, the, the issues of our sin that we brought into our walk, our Christian. And so we have an iniquitous pull that brings us back into the. You're cutting out there, Scott. Okay. I, I don't know what to say on that one. Might we be my a couple moments. Am I back on now? Yeah, we got you now. Okay. Um, well, what I was saying is that uh, the the sins of the father being visited on the third and fourth generation is at a minimal. And But the good news is, is that uh, through deliverance or the blood of Jesus Christ, we can overcome that. Amen. But unfortunately, deliverance isn't taught. Uh, spiritual warfare isn't taught. Everyone's looking for a sign. Everyone's looking for healing or wondering. But they're not looking at the, the basic order, being God of a God of order, and that is to repent, to renounce, to confess our sins to one another, and to come together uh, in acknowledgement that uh, what Jesus did for us and turn these things over to him. And so when we go through deliverance, we're willing to confess these things. We're willing to let them go. We don't want them in our lives. We become that new creation. We get rid of the old man. Well, that's not really happening. And so coming into this future of this technology, people are already beat up. And so this can, and I'm going to get into it more about the, um, the, the cohabitation of electromagnetics and demons, that uh, this is going to be a circumstance that if you're not delivered now, if you haven't closed your doors and gotten your demons out, uh, there may not be enough of us left to even help even the few that we've been able to help. So hurry up and get it done now. And that's why I've done my ministry for 18 years and why I've been doing what I do is to get everyone ready for these times. Now, radio waves or the electromagnetic uh, bombardment was something that I didn't even factor in. You know, being in engineering, being in radio waves, I, uh, uh, being an amateur radio operator myself, I've been around all of this, and, and I find now that, uh, that I believe that there's been some effects by the equipment that I used to work on. My immune system isn't the best. But what the difference between me and someone else who has not gotten rid of their sins or rebuked their sins and gotten their demons out is that I did. And so I'm able to still get up every day. I'm still able to pray for someone else. I'm still able to war and fight and cast out demons and deal with the day where a lot of people who call me are so beat up, uh, they're ready to bite the bullet. They're ready to give up. They're just beyond themselves. Well, they're still under spiritual attack. And now we have the radial spectrum that's upon us. So again, um, my main concern is for for everyone to get to get this resolved now because this 5G is not going to just go away. Cell phones are not going to just go away. If it isn't this system, they're going to come up with something else. And those people, by the way, who are gang stalked, I need to, to say, and I've said this before on my own show, that many who are gang stalked, actually you've got a target on your back 
and you've been set up spiritually for people to really just rave havoc on your life. Now, there are those who are uh, been selected by the by special departments of uh, whether it's been the Pentagon or the CIA or any of the five eyes, they call them. Yes, there is targeting. There is those things that go on. But the majority of the individuals that I deal with, it's really demonic because the more I pray with them, the more that I break the curses, the more that I cast the demons out, the more the effects that they thought was gang stalking go away. And so uh, any questions from, from this point? Yeah. No, very good. Um, uh, just go right ahead. Okay. Well, let me let me set the stage on understanding what radio waves are. Any time that you have a a influence of electromotive force, and I'm trying I'm going to try and be very simple about this because I don't want to bore anyone and and have you just kind of glaze over in your eyes. But whenever you have a, electromagnetic influences, that can come from radiation from the sun, that can come uh, from a radio transmitter from your cell phone, it can come from the ignition of your car, it can come from whatever source that creates a magnetic field that induces a voltage that travels through the air called EMF or electromotive force. Now, the, the, the question at hand that affects us is the level and what frequency. So what we're dealing with is we're dealing with frequencies of radiation or energy that exceed any levels that we've that uh, our civilizations have normally been exposed to. So in the 20th and 21st century, we now have radio communications. We now have other uh, implementations of electromagnetics that that cause great harm to us that they didn't have in the 1800s. They didn't have them in the 1700s. So we're in a new generation. Well, what we have today, when we're talking about AM and FM radio, we're talking about waves that we can tolerate. Of course, the closer that you would live to one of the transmitters, you know, the actual radio station itself, means that you would be in what's called a near field. So you would be subject to a higher amount of, a, of the electromagnetic influences than you would than than someone that's 10 20 30 miles away well what they want to do with 5g and what what they've been doing with cell phones is they want to allocate in locations all over the united states all over the world uh, these things they call transponders a transponder is a device that picks up a signal and rebroadcast it hence you have a cell tower well in order for the 5G to function, they have to uh, put in a thousand times more transponders than cell sites. So picture this. If you were in a forest and you lit one candle and the light was enough that you could see in the general area in front of you, maybe you could read a map, maybe you can, you know, make some coffee at the, you know, whatever you're doing. But as soon as you start walking away from that candle and you get behind a tree, you no longer see the light. So the higher that you go in frequency, the more line of sight that it becomes. And if you only have one transmitter, one candle, five candles in a forest, well, obviously it's not adequate for anyone to function in the forest. You can't walk through the forest You'd stumble and you fall because you'd get away from the light generated by the candles and you wouldn't be able to see. So what they have to do is they literally have to put a candle behind every tree, meaning that within, let's say, a mile forest, a very dense forest, there's going to be a million candles in order for everyone to see, to be able to go where they want to go. Because when you go up in frequency, whether it's a human whether it's um, a tree that has moisture in it, water is a, a, a very strong um, uh, opponent to radio waves. And when you go up on the higher frequencies, these things uh, are not able to carry the distance that the lower frequencies did, such as AM broadcasting, FM broadcasting, the old TVs, police and fire uh, radios. So when you get up into these higher frequencies, it's required to have more uh, repeater sites or transponders. Well, you say, well, why would you want to do that? Well, 
in order to have the technology that they want to implement, such as uh, Uber cars that drive themselves, everyone to have as much bandwidth as possible, in order to supply the bandwidth required to have this new technology, you have to go higher in frequency. When you go higher in frequency, you automatically get a higher bandwidth. And so in order to have this technology, this is their answer. So the Federal Communication, uh, about two years ago, what they did is they allocated uh, 24 gigahertz and up in, in frequency. So let me go through when I say gigahertz and kilohertz and megahertz. A kilohertz is a thousand times a second. So meaning that the oscillating wave or the frequency of the wave oscillates at a thousand times. So if you have 10 kilohertz, it oscillates 10,000 times a second. Well, that's amazing just in itself to think that something turns on and off or oscillates at that speed. But then you get up into megahertz. Well, that's a million times a second. So let's say that uh, you, you have a police radio and you want to listen to fire. So you're going to tune your radio to 154 million times a second reception to receive these waves. Well, that's amazing. That's incredible. But we don't stop there. Then we're going to get into the gigahertz. Well, the gigahertz is now called the millimeter wave or what we call microwave. Now, unfortunately, this frequency, uh, when notice I said microwave, you have microwave. They used to call them radar ranges. You can put your coffee in there. You can put a, a steak in there. You can put a chicken in this microwave and cook it. Well, what's happening is the energy is going through uh, the tissue and the tissue made up of moisture. And remember I said earlier that moisture is resistive to radio waves. So now you have friction. So now you're creating heat and that's how the, the, uh, the food heats up. But unfortunately, uh, the waves as it's passing through, the, the old terms nuke it, but it's not really being uh, any nuclear radiation, that the structure of the cell of the chicken or the beef or whatever you're doing changes. And if you consume microwave food on a regular basis, if for any reason you had to have blood work done, someone who looks at the cells, your red cells, your white cells, and looks at the count, they'll ask you, uh, you eat, you know, or tell you, you, you eat a lot of microwave food. And you say, how do you know that? And he said, well, by the cell count or the stacking of the cells. So radio waves, as you go higher in frequency, are natural enemies to human tissue. In fact, Geiger counters, when you read RADS, means how much radiation uh, it takes to, to damage tissue over what period of time. Well, there's even higher frequencies. You can go up into the teras. We know it as x-ray, we know it as gamma. Uh, these are things that probably in the future, if anything continues, they may go to that. But right now, we're dealing with the gigahertz frequency. So when we're talking about 24, 25, 26, and even 50 and 60 gigahertz, we're talking about such crazy frequency and energy that it is a weapon. If I were to build a weapon, those are the frequencies that I would use. Well, what happens to our tissue? Well, when, as I mentioned about the microwave and the food, as, as the energy goes through the cells, our DNA, the, the helix, actually begins to unravel. The other is that the, the, our immune system, um, our natural uh, ability to create uh, immunity, is then hampered. But the other two is that we have metals in us. We have copper, we have beryllium, we have uh, you know, different things that are good for us, but we also have things that are bad for us like aluminum. Well, when radio waves pass through them, these metals begin to oxidize. So the antioxidants that you would take to, to help you know, keep yourself healthy no longer can keep up with the amount of oxidation that's being generated in your body. This includes your brain. So this is why we have dementia. This is why we have Alzheimer's. This is why we have autism, along with all the metals that are being put into us through vaccinations, through chemtrail spraying. And so we have a combination 
of influences of electromagnetic that we were never intended to have. In fact, these frequencies were originally reserved for military and for aerospace uh, exploration. And now the Federal Communication has allocated these frequencies to commercial use, and they've just grabbed it up and, and got it ready. Now, they've been working on this for some time, but you need to understand that all the candles I was talking about, the transponders that you would need to light the forest, this is a multi-billion dollar project, and it's not going to happen overnight. So if you're worried that you've got 5G in your area, you, you may or you may not. Uh, they have did some test bed work. They've done a lot of uh, experiments prior. I know that San Diego and parts of Los Angeles and other parts of the country have had the, the experiments done. But there's also the implementation of a lower frequency for tests like the Uber cars in Arizona. 5G isn't really in place in, in Phoenix. And they, they don't need it just yet to do the, uh, the automatic um, non-driver car because there's not enough of them on the road to exceed the band limit uh, necessary to operate. But when that does get approved and they start to increase the amount of, the, of cars that are uh, driverless, then they'll have to implement the 5G. So 5G in itself is so advanced with the ability to create communication with limited distance, as I mentioned, like, you know, getting behind the tree with, with the candle, that they have to use supercomputers. These supercomputers are connected to basically the internet and to microwave and, and uh, fiber optics and satellite. And so they're on the system. Now, in order to control this whole network, I believe that the system that's already online, we know as artificial intelligence on the internet, has the ability to control the 5G. Um, I, do you have any questions before I go into this next part at all? Oh, I got a bunch of them. Um, the, um, and I, I don't want to get you off course because um, it's really beginning to make sense. Um, but basically, um, 5G is going to have the same effect on our blood that uh, microwave would uh, or eating microwave food only at a much higher magnified scale. But let's say someone that is being exposed to this and they go down and they get a blood test, what would their blood test look like? How would they know if this is beginning to affect their blood? Um, well, the ability to transfer oxygen, to take it in from your lungs and, and get it to the vital areas, your brain literally takes half the oxygen in your body to sustain yourself. And so you'll be lethargic. Uh, your memory will start to go. You'll start to act like you have Alzheimer's, you know, dementia. You're, you'll catch colds. You'll, the flu will always get you. You'll, you'll just have um, every issue. And so when they look at your blood work, they'll see that your, you know, your, your white count, uh, your ability, your, your red cells to carry the oxygen, that's what they'll see. They'll, be, they'll see them stacking up. They'll see them also oxidized. So they're not able to obtain the oxygen, but the numbers will drop. And so anyone doing blood work would automatically know that you've been exposed. And radiation will do the same thing, too, if someone's been radiated, you know, if they worked in the nuclear industry along with um, other, you know, obvious uh, signs such as uh, tissue burning. But um, the other two, by the way, is cataracts, um, blindness, the inability to see at night, your night vision, I mean, this is horrific. What, what this, this whole thing is just insane. Uh, by the way, uh, police officers that, that uh, used the old uh, radar for, uh, you know, speed uh, measuring, mm -hmm. that, that some of the units that, that were available, you know, back in the 70s were high powered. And they were so strong that they actually mounted them behind the officer on a little tripod and it shot over their shoulder out the window and many of them, um, they won't tell you this, and they won't release the information. They got tumors in their brains. And oh. so they were one of the first victims of this issue, along with people in the military. 
Mm. Now, I, I did a show recently with uh, Eric Dollard, and I'll probably talk a little bit about him too, that um, when he was in the military, he worked for RCA. He was in the Navy. And whenever they worked on radar, they would always shut it down. They were always conscious to make sure that the, the sailors, that the technicians uh, were not exposed to the radar, were not exposed to the communication electromagnetics. Uh, and today, people are being bombarded as if they were on ships standing in front of the radar. And, you know, the, the World Health Organization, the Federal Communication, OSHA, all of these agencies are looking the other way. And, and so with, with the amount of damage that's, that's already been done, because people are already dying from brain tumors of cell phones, they're already having issues, um, I, again, um, mood disorders. Um, there's, there's even those that, that um, I believe that, that needed deliverance, that some of the voices that they heard wasn't necessarily voice to skull, wasn't necessarily schizophrenic demons. It actually was a combination of the two. And, and so when, when you think that you're losing your mind, what's the, one of the first things that comes in? And that's fear. And so the gripping of the fear causes people to behave in manners uh, that they normally wouldn't, to, to reject uh, being part of society, you know, argumentation amongst uh, married couples, uh, loss of job, inability to think, just all of these things. So if someone were to go in the hospital and to have these tests done, those would be the symptoms and those would be the things that the uh, medical people would see as they did the blood work. Very good. Well, Scott, we're coming up on the bottom of the hour. Why don't you give your contact information out? We'll do that again right before we go to questions. And... Donna is collecting questions from the chat, and I bet we're getting a lot of them. But Scott has a lot of broadcasts with gobs and gobs of information. And for those that would want to contact Scott for counsel or deliverance, Scott, go ahead and give your, your contact information out. Well, I originally, the show that I did was Scott Enser Network. I still have the website up. Uh, my, my organization is actually based under that, but the main show that I've been doing now for a couple of years, uh, is, is called tinfoil hat club. And the reason that I chose the name getting away from the basic of the mainstream church is because trying to bring deliverance into the church and trying to bring the information, uh, about UFOs, about gang stalking, you know, all the things that, that, uh, that I deal with and help people out wasn't received very well by the church. And so I decided then, you know, we're to evangelize, we're to make disciples of all men. And so I'm meeting them in the trenches. And so my show is designed to reach all types of people. And believe me, I do. Yeah. And, and so tinfoilhatclub.com is the main show or scotthensler.org. If you go to those websites, uh, the contact information will be there. You'll see, just tap on that and you'll be able to reach me. Very good. Very good. All right. Uh, well, you just continue on. This is really, you're doing a really good job of making this understandable for yeah. uh, the layman of which I consider myself. And uh, this is something that... Um, is, is no one's going to escape this. We're not escaping it now. And um, it is indeed uh, going to play a huge role in Bible prophecy. So the what kind of an in-game scenario and concept uh, do these people have in mind as they are putting this together? And I know um, a big part of that is, like you mentioned, the population reduction of uh, and just making people dysfunctional so they can be controlled. But how does this fit in biblically uh, with Bible prophecy? What role is this type of technology playing? Well, there's several ways to, to approach this. One, um, our spiritual ability to connect with God. If we are sick, if we are confused, if we are wounded, if we are traumatized, 
and you have not been delivered, then the likelihood of you being a stance against evil in the last days will be greatly reduced. Your, your likelihood to fight, your likelihood to understand who you are, uh, you may be more susceptible to caving in, accepting the system. That would be the end game, along with just plain removing those people in large numbers. Because when they get down to it, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be 62. All right, I'm too old for them. They're just going to take me out. I've, there's nothing they can do with me. They're not going to change my mind. But at the same time, that I'm also somebody that is willing to stand in the name of Jesus Christ and rebuke them. And so since the devil's in the details and these individuals are demonic, whether they're a reptilian, whether they're a demon-possessed individual, the point of it is, is that this is, this is a spiritual battle. So uh, to, to harm the church, to, to take those that would have uh, been able to stand in the last days, and make no mistake about it, if you are alive today, you are here for this fight. And so this has been an attempt to keep you from being the men and women of God that God intended you to be. And so that would be the end game on that, that uh, plane. But the other is if, if you are, uh, your, your cognitive ability to comprehend, uh, if you have dissonance and you're not able to see the next thing that's coming because you're blinded from pain, you're blinded, your, your thought processes aren't there, you're unable to reason, you're unable to, uh, you know, just see what's really going on, see the big picture, then you're not going to fight. You're not in opposition. You're, you're not going to oppose. And that would be, you know, the rest of the world, basically. But um, w I need to, to also point out, as I mentioned, that with the ability of the demonic realm, now, I, I, I just did uh, three shows on, on my uh, broadcast uh, called The Beast of the Earth, a series of one, two, and three. And I pointed out that as we go higher in technology, as we get more towards the actual, um, how should I say it, uh, the, the, the connection to the atom, the connection to, to the electromagnetic uh, spectrum as being the dimensions, just like CERN is doing, then it, it's, it's easier for the demons to control and manipulate. And that's part of what artificial intelligence is about. So on 5G, which, can, which is considered the, fa, the, the V band, you have the L band, you have the K band, that's all microwave. As I mentioned before, it's all line of sight. Now, you, you already have your cell phones, which are 900, 1.9, 2.4 gigahertz. You have Bluetooth, which is 2.4 gigahertz. You have uh, Wi-Fi, which, which can be 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. These frequencies bombarding us also bathe us in electromagnetics that we can be monitored. We can be observed. We can have radio waves that pass through us because they're not as high as 5G. And from one cell tower to another, as the radio waves pass through us, then our thought processes, which have uh, electromagnetic stimulation, that's why you can have your brain scanned, that's why they can see you know, what's going on in your noggin, basically, is that the small electrical uh, pulses that are generated influence the radio waves that go through our brains. That's called carrier. So from one cell tower to another, as the signals pass through us, we influence it with our mind, we influence it with our, our emotions, and it's picked up at the other cell tower. Well, with supercomputers or artificial intelligence, they're able to take this massive amount of information by a great deal of the population. So otherwise, the bigger the computers are, we, you know, we've got the, the uh, mining data centers, We've got Google, we've got uh, the NSA in Salt Lake. There's these, you know, massive data collection sites everywhere. And through supercomputers, they're able to take all of this information and decipher it. So once you've been mapped, meaning that you have, an, you have a personality, you have a thought process, everyone thinks differently, you know, that's part of your personality, that can be mapped. And once you're mapped, you're put in the system. Now, that can be by a gang stalker who's standing behind you in the checkout line at the grocery store. 
with the cell phone and they point it to the back of your head and it only takes us, you know, about uh, one or two seconds. They've mapped you, they hit the button, it, it uploads to the system and they have you. So now in the crowd of a thousand people, they know where you're at, they know what you're thinking, they can even see through your eyes, they can hear through your ears, because all of the data is brought into the mind, carried through the electromagnetics that go through our body, it's influenced to the next cell tower, it's then downloaded to the data centers. So with this, in order to crunch all these numbers, we have to have quantum computers. Now, when, when, when I talk about supercomputers, we're talking about Cray computers, we're talking about uh, Motorola computers, we're, we're talking about all the devices that have been able to crunch high, high amounts of data for over uh, periods of time. But now we have a, a new kit on the block, and, and that is quantum computers. And through the Q uh, bit that they call it, it's a kind of, kind of visualize a plasma that has thought that instead of a data line of zero and one that just comes crunch, 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 you know, um, uh, binary, hexadecimal, which is the computer language, the strings or the data lines, now they're able to come in in a three-dimensional thought process. So instead of just doing ones and twos on lines, they're able to do multitasking in all directions and all thought processes and when this is then brought online for artificial intelligence, it, it is able to take on uh, the characteristics of whatever they want it to do. So let's say that it now, uh, because of the carrier being able to read your mind, being able to take your thought, is now formed into a second altar of thought process in the artificial intelligence. Well, what, what good is that? Well, this way they can stay one step ahead of you on what you're going to do. Now, they've been using Facebook. They've been using other medias to basically map you to, to, to see, you know, like your, your search habits. You know, what do you, what do you think? What do you look for? You know, what, what is your interest? What's your hobbies? What do you like and what do you dislike? Well, they have that already. That's what's in, the, that's what's in these data mining centers. But the, the, the whole point is now it's going to be taken to another level. And, and let, me, let me show you why here. Okay, on, on 5G, in order to do what I talked about, to have all the candles in the forest so it lights up the forest, has to be handled, has to be controlled, has to be able to, to be able to extract the information or send the information where they want it to at a very fast rate of speed. So that means the ability to control each one of, remember I, I referred to it as a transponder, that's the actual site where the 5G will transmit from or transceive. And this is an intelligent beam forming. Note the, the term beam forming. This is something very specific to 5G. Well, what it means, and, and uh, David, I, I talked about this earlier, Picture a spider that's able, that has a thousand eyes. You know, they've, they've got all these little eyes and they can look at all directions. This transponder isn't just one antenna or four or five antennas like on a cell site. It can be several hundred within a box about the size of a shoe box or double the size of a shoe box. So if you, if you do not see the shoe box size antennas, all around you, then you do not have 5G. They're not in the cell towers. They're not in uh, these, these other communication networks. When you see these, these will be very distinctive. So like a, a page that you get out of your printer will be about that big, about uh, three, four inches deep, and there may be several, several of them. Well, since the microwave is so high in frequency, that means that it's a millimeter wave and that the antenna can be very micro small. So this box can have hundreds of antennas that virtually are like the eyes of a spider that can look in all directions at one time. And now in order for this to look in all directions at one time and be able to determine the circumstances, which I'll talk about in a minute, 
you have to process the data. So each one of these units in itself is an amazing uh, feat of engineering, a work of art when it comes to, to controlling, that each one of these units will be able to determine which antenna needs to point in what direction in order to complete the communication to, to an unmanned car, to a drone, to a cell phone, to, to a computer that's being used. And when the person moves around and walks, remember I said if you stand behind a tree, then you lose the light? Well, then the other antenna will kick in, and it has to do it in an instant. And so the ability to process this information, again, means that it's tied to the supercomputers, which then means it can be automatically tied to the artificial intelligence. So with this beam forming, which is a type of directional instead of an omnidirectional, meaning all directions, they have to put these everywhere. So when 5G is in, that means you're going to see these boxes, these shoebox size or paper uh, size boxes everywhere. They're going to be on street poles. They're going to be on traffic lights. They're going to be on power poles. They're going to be everywhere. And that is when you'll know that you have 5G. Now, when that takes place, as this all happens, that the, the ability to transfer the data means, like the system that I talked about for cell towers of reading the mind, the carrier, that now not only can they do this no matter where you're at, it also means that each one of these boxes are like radar. So as someone walks by, it detects them because of what's called Doppler. I don't know if you're familiar with Doppler. You've probably heard of Doppler um, uh, radar for weather reporting. Um, picture someone on a train that's blowing a horn, and you're standing on the dock at the train station, the train depot. And the train continues by, but as the train comes at you and they're blowing on the horn, you can hear the horn, but as the train passes by, you hear the tone change, right? You hear that the, the sound is now going away from you, and the, the sound traveling at the speed of sound now slows down because the train is moving away from you versus coming to you, so there's a change in the tone. Well, that's called Doppler. So this Doppler effect is also used in the 5G, meaning that it is a personal radar, that if you have two people, five people, 10 people, 100 people on the crown, not only can it profile you because you're already in the data system, it knows exactly where you are. So if you're not even carrying a cell phone, they can still track you. Well, this also means that we're going to be absolutely flooded in this, this electromagnetic spectrum all the time at levels unheard of before. The very fact of subjecting us to this type of frequency and this radiation shows that uh, they really don't care. Uh, they have uh, other you know, means uh, you know, that they've not told us quite yet, but we know that anyone who would ever do such a thing, because who would want to harm another human being? Who would want to cook them? Who would, who would want to make them suffer? Well, again, whether, whether you believe in the pre-Damic race, whether you believe in reptilians or greys or whatever the circumstance are, there are demons, period. And whether, they're, whether you have uh, a live flesh creature that's been created in a lab, whether you have an offspring of the Nephilim, whether you have a, a demonic spirit, we still have evil. So this whole system is evil. And it's at the control through the artificial intelligence being basically operated by supercomputers. And this network, and, and by the way, it's so intelligent, uh, 5G, that when they install it, the operators or the installers can really just be regular construction people. They, they do not need to be engineers. They do not need to be technicians. All they need to do is mount it and bring power to it. And when they fire it up, it has the ability to profile uh, the neighborhood, to profile your house, to profile uh, the surrounding area, puts it into memory, and then makes adjustments 
to the best efficiency in order to com to complete the communication necessary uh, to fulfill its operation. And this is beyond, this is science fiction. We're, we're at a stage that just literally shows, and by the way, drones are going to be used uh, quite uh, quite a bit more because of 5G with all the data processing that's that's now going to be available. But my concern, again, is the tracking and the, the ability to know where everyone's at, to know what everyone's thinking, to know what everyone sees or hears or or whatever their thought process is. So if you have somebody that uh, you know doesn't agree with the, the deep state government or or agree with with what's going on, they're automatically categorized. Now that's already been done to some degree because of what we have today, but this now takes it to another level that I call the beast system, and that literally leads us into what we're heading into Armageddon, what we're heading into. Uh, the tribulation, the apocalypse, uh, all of the things that, uh, you know, that we're going to be facing. But none of us really thought that we would be dealing with this type of creature, this type of evil, radio waves that come into our homes. And even, it doesn't matter, just like you said, no one's going to escape this. And, and so what do we do? Well, it's already late to fight. It's already late to try and petition, you know, our congressmen because they're all bought out. And and by the way, uh, the electrical grid system is being altered. If you go to uh, my YouTube channel, which you can link off of Tinfoil Hat Club, you'll see an interview that I did with uh, Eric Dollard. And he revealed to us that because he runs into it, he, he's an electrical engineer, he's a professor in science that they're altering and changing the electrical grid to the point that instead of having the safeties of grounded systems, the way that they've altered the electrical uh, wires that run from, you know, the transmission of the substations to the power poles into your house, now you, you no longer have a grounded system. You no longer have the isolation to keep you from getting electrical shocks lightning storms, EMPs, even breakdowns in the system itself that would send high amounts of energy to your home, which happens, you now do not have the protection. But that also means that all the radio waves, all the electromagnetic noise that's in the air now comes right into your home. So if you're hanging on to your dishwasher, you're holding on to it, you're, you're, you know, you're doing laundry and you've got your hand on the lid of your washing machine, at that point in time, you become the grid system where before you were isolated, where before you were protected. That's no longer the case. So now we've entered into another um, issue that puts us all at risk. And I'll stop there and see if you got questions. Wow. That, um, as I hear you unpack this, the thought that comes to my mind is just evil. Um, people that implement things like this and of course many people that are in the in the system they don't understand it but the people that are implementing this they do understand it and they're doing it without any regard to the effects that this type of technology is having on the lives and the health of individuals and i believe that most certainly the the people that develop and implement these type of things in a higher level. They understand the connection that this type of technology has with the supernatural realm. And I believe also there's a growing awareness on the part of occultists. Just like now there are believers that are getting the connection between this technology and the supernatural, there are people on the dark side also. And I wanted to ask you about something that John Pounders run into. He was in Denver and he was filming ritual sites and they came up, uh, upon uh, a power cone and this power cone was set upon an electrical box and basically what power cones are they are just a cone and they'll 
Uh, they'll pray over it and bless it. Witches and occultists will use power cones. And the design of it is to draw a particular entity into an area. And this power cone was set up on top of an electrical box uh, there at a transformer. And it seems to me that the people on the dark side are trying to use this uh, just as there are believers now that are becoming aware of it and how to fight it from the spiritual side. Yeah, the, there's no question in, in, in that particular circumstance. And, I, and, and so that brings up something else that I need to talk about. In um, the General Electric Corporation, when it, in its, in its uh, early stages, that when you had you know, the men of the time they actually were spiritualist. And so they were using electronic means called spirit phones. And what that means is that through an analog type radio receiver, they would ask questions like you would go to a psychic. And instead of having a familiar spirit, then any spirit that was capable or understood the electromagnetic spectrum could manipulate uh, the the radio waves, and you could actually hear the answer that you asked the spirits come over the speaker. So that's been you know since the turn of the century of, or the 19 of 18 or the 20th century, and so it's been going on for a long time. Now you you can actually buy these things online, and I've told people they call them the Frank Box and a few other things. Do not use them; it's necromancy. Okay. Uh -huh. Absolutely. So, so what you're talking about, uh, this cone, if they have it on an electrical system and they're calling in spirits, then again, with the grid system that I was talking about that no longer has the proper grounding and that all interferences or all uh, electromagnetic uh, radiation that should have been bled off so you're not affected by it, again, can put you at risk at this. But again, maybe they're looking at failure, Maybe they're looking for gaining energy. Now, here's something that's very interesting. One of the transformers that Tesla, uh, Nikola Tesla, had developed for the uh, Philadelphia experiment was in the shape of a pyramid. And they found that through the, the, the uh, action of the magnetics coming upward into a peak at the cone, which they call, you know, we call a capstone, there was an acceleration or the ability to open up that spectrum, open up that dimension, open up the ability to come and go, and hence this is one of the creation or one of the uh, operations of the Philadelphia experiment to make things disappear. So yes, there is a connection, and this uh, this uh, cone that that uh, saw, you know, this is one of the things. If you see something like this, rebuke it. We still have the authority to to disconnect it, to take it offline. So. Yeah, yeah, they did. They tore the thing down and um, and prayed over it and rebuked it absolutely. And I wonder if you had ever heard um, this in regard with Albert Pike. Albert Pike made the claim that he could communicate with Giuseppe Mazzini, uh, who was in Italy, and with other of his ilk with wireless means and this is something that pike claimed and people around him claimed that and i wondered what was going on there was this some kind of a spirit phone was this technology that they possessed that um, others did at the time and i wonder if you'd ever heard that regarding mr pike well pike would have been uh, prior to most of the technology that came along like in tesla's time and and so forth but uh, today they would call it remote viewing. That is astral projecting. Now you need to remember that Albert Pike being head of the Freemasons in Europe and the United States, that he worked with the third eye. And so astral projection or using the ability of familiar spirits would have been exactly what, it, what he was doing. So they'd be conjuring, that would be channeling It'd be the basics of, of witchcraft. So, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, if anybody could do it, old Albert could. Um, no doubt about that. And um, But just go right ahead, Scott. It's uh, just amazing the 
the thoughts that come and the uh, the just the scope of this is just mind-boggling and i uh, believe that what we're seeing is that we are seeing people that are did that are acquiring it um in ways that have not been in the past um usually um it takes uh sexual abuse in a repeated manner that begins before the age of five or a systematic attempt uh, by a cult with a repeated trauma to break down the soul. But now, like you were mentioning, uh, divorce scenarios, which are terribly traumatic, or other things that this, along with the, um, the bombardment we're getting from electromagnetic impulses, that this is producing the same effect in people that a lot of this ritualistic abuse. And I think this is why we're seeing this off the chart uh, people that are experiencing uh, the splitting of the soul. Well, I, I uh, a couple, I don't know, it's been a month or so, I interviewed Preston Nichols from the Montauk Project. Now, one of the things that was achieved at the Montauk Project for uh, programming for satanic ritual abuse type uh, trauma based mind control MK Ultra was through electronic means able to to uh, to get into the mind to to program someone at a faster rate so instead of taking you know a year or two years or the age that you were talking about when when the best uh, time for the occult to do such things they could do it in a shorter time they were able to program people of different ages that maybe could not of prior. And this was all through electronic means that, again, through this same system uh, of uh, psychotronics, of carrier, and, again, even pain uh, scenarios. Because one of the things with trauma-based mind control is to induce pain, to induce um, fear, to induce uh, extreme cold, uh, lack of sleep. Um, frequencies of high noises, just uh, waiting for the other shoe to drop, which we call post-traumatic stress. So this technology, again, as we move forward, can be used for all that. Now, one of the things that, that I am concerned about is, as I, as I mentioned on the show that I just did, the, the Beast of the Earth, that we have hybrids. Syria right now has been reporting that these super soldier type hybrids have been killing and eating the soldiers right there on the field. Now, these are a self-sustaining uh, warrior that has been um, basically genetically modified as a soldier to do the dirty work, which I believe comes from Israel, which I believe comes from the United States and even Russia, I believe, in the opposition of all this. But they, too, have to have a communication system. They, too, are, need to be controlled. They need to be brought back. They need to be told what to do. They need to be shown where to go. And so this electronic system, whether it's uh, through military-type cell or through satellite or any of the other technology, I call this being online. Whether you're online with demons through astral projection, astral travel, whether you're online through clairvoyance, meaning of familiar spirits, whether you're online through psychotronic means, everything that is taking place in wartime scenarios leading up to what we will be dealing in Armageddon, that uh, this technology is in place and I believe is being tested out now. This is part of what's going on in Syria. So if you have a clone, if you have a hybrid, if you have a super soldier, if you have basically a beast, meaning anything other than human, then it doesn't have the soul. It's it's an abomination. It's like a disembodied uh, spirit from from the the dead Nephilim, and what it means that it does not have a conscience. It does not have the ability to to love, and it is able to basically to to kill indiscriminately without any thought whatsoever. No conscience. Uh, nothing of the Holy Spirit to tell it. Uh, to give it, uh, you know, any uh, feel of guilt that it should stop such a thing. 
And, and so this technology, again, I believe through satellites and through the, you know, military type cell phone, that everything that we're seeing taking place in Syria is probably the first real experiment of these types of soldiers in a full combat situation that is literally going to lead us into these days. Now, I, I know that, that we've talked a little bit about the pre damic we've, we've talked about uh, different things uh, in the past, but when it comes to what we're dealing with now, if you're wondering how they're going to control these things, whether you have someone who is a sorcerer that's in the military that is doing astral controlling, whether you have somebody who's using control through electronic means of these particular clones, which may have a chip in them, a super soldier or a hybrid that may have a chip in them, regardless, it's still going to be the same technology. And so I was mentioning on my show that just south of me here at Area 52, which is the Tonopal test range, I came across some information that the underground facility is housing potentially 250,000 of these creatures that are super soldiers. Well, if you've got that many that you release at one time, you know, if you've ever kicked an ant bed or thrown a rock at a, at a, a wasp nest as a kid just to see what happened, uh, to try and control these things would be quite a task. So I think that 5G in and itself, that once it's in place, may be one of the main control networks to control these things. So I don't expect to see anything real fast, uh, real quick here that will happen as I'm speaking about uh, this. But I think that once 5G or some of the other technologies are in place, I believe that will be the control grid. So. Wow. Um, we had a, a man whose father was in the CIA give us, uh, no, it was his grandfather, excuse me. And they gave us his Bible, and it was a Masonic Bible, and it was very elaborately uh, encased in metal. We, we have it in the other room in there. And I have had other people tell us that similar books and objects encased in metal uh, have been seen in ritual sites. And the, you know, you talked about chemtrails, uh, about how the metals and the chemtrails will actually make our bodies conductive and open us up to be able to be manipulated not only by the frequencies in the air, but to use that in opening doors to the supernatural. Now, could it be, uh, and is there any connection, and, I, and that's what I thought when I see these uh, Bibles and ritual books encased in metal, that they're literally just using them as conductors, and could the use of, um, of such things like the lustrous waters, the use of waters with salts in them that they'll spray on individuals and in the area, could this do the same thing, create uh, conductivity that would open doors up and enhance their uh, invocation of their devils? Is, is this something that is a reality? Absolutely. In, in fact, water in itself, H2O, is non-conductive. If, if you were to accidentally be exposed to electrical wires while in contact with water, if it is distilled water, you're not going to be shocked. It's till, it's a, and until you add salt to it or you add any type of metal, that is what takes place. Are we still online? It went off for a second. Okay. If I'm still online, I'll just continue. But with it, when, when you introduce salts, metals, aluminums, uh, beryllium, or any of the other that uh, comes from chemtrails, and you consume them, then this is a circumstance that... There he is back. All right. And Scott, we lost you. Okay. Uh, right. I, wasn't, I wasn't sure. I'll, I'll pick up where I left off. Yeah. I was mentioning that uh, water in itself, uh, H2O, is not conductive. I used to be an analytical tester for Motorola on DNI's water. And the reason that they had this particular um, filtration system 
was so that when it came in contact with their processes, there was no contamination of metals onto the integrated circuits that they were making. And I noticed that uh, if I were to take my finger and actually touch the tub of water, the meter that measured the conductivity or the resistance of the water would peg just from the simple touch of my finger because of the salts in my finger would now make the water conductive. Wow. So, so anytime that salt, aluminums, beryllium, uh, and any copper or any of these other metals are introduced in our systems. In fact, a, a, an electrician who's working and sweating uh, very profusely stands a higher chance of being completely electrocuted than someone who is not sweating because now the salt is on the outside of their body. Wow. And, and so, yes, it, it is all affected. Metal uh, is absolutely a conductor. The length of the metal the width of the metal can be uh, can have a resonance, meaning you have an antenna that has a certain length. Well, that length is um, proportional to the frequency. So a book, if it's a certain length or width or height or whatever, it may be a certain resonance. So if it's got a metal cover on it, I mean, I've never run into that, but it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. It may be also, too, that... Uh, the particular metal in itself may be uh, of a ritual content of having silver, maybe having some gold in it. Um, uh, that, that would be my guess. But uh, I wanted to mention, too, that um, your pineal gland, which is part of the third eye, meaning that, that it seems to be our transducer or our antenna to the Holy Spirit. Now, the occult has learned that the opening of the third eye takes over the pineal gland. This is why the Catholic Church has the, um, uh, the cone on, on their staffs, which look like a pine cone, which kind of looks like a pineal, uh, the pineal gland in our brain. If, if, you, if you take too much mineral content, such as you know, uh, the water treatment that we have in our you know, United States, that can, that can absolutely foul that up. It can take it into a carbon level where it's no longer functioning. So what does that mean? Well, that means that uh, our ability to connect uh, to the spirit, meaning in, in the sense of, of God's way, uh, is hampered. When, when I pray for people and I break the, the Freemason curses off of them or the occult, I close their third eye. And when I do that, their nightmares go away, the visitations go away, their thought processes clear up, they're no longer confused, they're no longer getting these false messages from the demonic realm that contradict the Holy Spirit. So it's a battle, you know, the, the, the spirit realm battles over the mind. This is where the fear is in our mind. This is where uh, the thoughts come in that, that uh, maybe we think we're not loved or cared by God or no one cares or I'm worthless or any of this other, the battle's in the mind. And, and when someone has uh, their pineal gland or the third eye open, they're going to hear every kind of demonic message that contradicts uh, the message that God has for them. So whether it's through, through uh, spirit means, whether it's through word curses or curses that come through opening up the third eye, such as the ceremonies that take place in Freemasonry, or whether it's heavy metals and, and electronic means. This is what we're running into. So everything that, uh, that is your concern, uh, I confirm, it is a concern. Yeah, and I think there is a awareness of, just like with the power cone, just like with these lustrous waters, and I believe that uh, a lot of the potions that these people are having people to drink, that it's the same thing, that these same principles um, are in operation. And wanted to digress to what we were talking about just before this just a bit. And in the regard to the super soldiers, are all sides using this? Is this primarily the United States and Israel? Uh, who are the people that are actually using this, or is it all of the above? 
Well, it's all of the above. Definitely China, definitely uh, Russia, definitely the United States, and, and definitely Israel. Israel is extremely advanced in technology. Um, it's been 12 years ago I was offered to go to Israel to contract with uh, Intel. Well, who would think Intel would be in Israel? Well, Israel actually has one of the most advanced sites for Intel to make microprocessors. In fact, uh, being in the war-torn area that they are, the walls of the factory are literally three feet thick with uh, you know, uh, all the steel and all the concrete to protect it. So when we're talking about advancements of, of technology, whether it's electronic, being of military, being of bio, being that of, of uh, being able to alter DNA, they're definitely at the top of the game. And by the way, 5G and its development and manufacturing is mostly coming from uh, Israel with the agreement with, with um, President Trump to purchase and to have their engineering uh, lead the way into the United States. Wow. So when it comes to Russia, well, Syria was reporting, even by their own administration, even in the UN, uh, that they were reporting the um, genetically modified soldiers that are in the field. And they're blaming Israel, they're blaming the United States. And so in order to counter this, then, you know, someone like uh, Russia who, who is on, on Syria's side uh, is going to bring in their bad boys and, and let them duke it out. So again, Syria right now is a, is a test site for this technology for genetically modified super soldiers. They're, after the smoke clears, they're going to see who, whose uh, who's, uh, toy works the best. Wow. And, and so China uh, themselves... You betcha they've got that technology. Remember they, the amount of money that they were making off the United States uh, for all the goods that they were selling, uh, harbor freight and tools. You know, I mean, everyone had to go to harbor freight and buy tools. They were taking all that money and building up their military. And with this, the selling of the secrets and uh, the Clintons, by the way, when they were in office, they sold a great deal of information to the Chinese. They sold a great deal of information to the North Koreans, along with nuclear uh, uh, information. So, yes, they all have them, or at least the big boys on the block have them. And the United States has led the way with Area 51, with uh, Project uh, Paperclip, you know, bringing in the Nazi scientists uh, to develop all of this. And here we are today, 60, 70 years later, they have state-of-the-art uh, weapons, and these weapons are hybrids, and they're being re unleashed and, and released. And again, uh, the technology in order to control them is, again, you know, much like the 5G. So the 5G, once it's in place, I believe we're going to see more of this activity of these hybrids because this will be the control mechanism. Wow. Uh, a couple times tonight, you have mentioned pre-Adamic spirits, and I've never discussed this with you before, and I do believe in uh, the pre-Adamic race and pre-Adamic spirits. And if you do, um, what uh, effect do you think these spirits are having? What are they? Uh, what effect do they have? And uh, what role are they playing in the dark side? Well, uh, again, with the last three shows that I did, uh, The Beasts of the Earth, I go into detail, and I go into detail about how the brain works. Now, again, I was talking about the electrical impulses. You know, you even have chemical. We have hormone. Uh, you know, we, we have the, all the system makeup of our brain that is alive and electrical pulses. And since these electrical pulses are uh, minute, again, when a demon influences, when it comes to paranoid schizophrenia, when it comes to hearing voices, when it comes to fear, when it comes to delusional or any of the other circumstances of, um, of depression, uh, being suicidal, this is how this takes place in the brain, is that the demons manipulate the electrical and the chemical and the hormonal, and it takes a specific demon to do it. So you have a spirit of fear, you have a spirit of anger, you have a spirit of rage, you have a spirit of infirmity. 
and they've learned to manipulate and control. So when you take medications, when you take a psychotropic drug, then what it does is it short circuits what the demon is doing. It keeps them from, from being able to manipulate that part of the brain. But you'll notice that people who come off the medication, they crash. Well, now you've got a demon that's been bound for two months, five months, a year, and he's mad. He's, he's not been able to act out his ugly, ugly nature. And when you come down off these medications, uh, you've got a, a rattlesnake that wants to uh, stretch, uh, come out of the hole and stretch himself out. So demons are able to use electromagnetics. That's why I was talking about the spirit phone. That's a great representation to show that the electromagnetic spectrum can be influenced by the demonic. Well, again, what is the demonic? Well, again, uh, as I'm, you know, Book of Enoch and other cases uh, that tell us that the sons of God coming into the daughters of men, um, mating with them, bearing giants, then we have an abomination. We have a altered or a corruption of man. And this pre, pre-flood, you know, such as the book of Enoch, that when they were destroyed, that since they were not a spirit of, of God, God being the father of spirits, those things during conception, during uh, the formation of, of human in, in the womb, that this spirit that God places into him then is sanctified or is holy because it comes from him. When you have Lucifer, when you have the fallen angels or the 200 fallen angels, when they did what they did, that was an abomination. So when these creatures, when these uh, hybrids, when these uh, Nephilim died, they then became evil spirits. Now, you can also have human spirit, and this is in the form of what we call sirens. So there were women who didn't, who were not just taken by fallen angels, they actually lusted after them. And so this was a damnation that came place onto a human, and we, we call them sirens. So in the spirit realm, we have quite a mixture of things. Now, with pre-Adamic, whether we had prior to Adam, whether they, whatever you want to call it, I believe that there is such a mixture of demonic spirits out there that trying to separate them or trying to determine where they came from is a task I'm not qualified to do. But what I do do is I categorize them to their purpose, to their ability, what they're capable of doing. Otherwise, when they infect an individual, when they act out their ugly nature, is it a nature of depression? It is a, is it a symptom of anxieties or, or even being lethargic or anger or whatever. But in either case, we're dealing with a, a, a entity that is able to manipulate the mind and since the mind works off of electrical impulses, since the mind works off of chemicals, this is what they do. And this is uh, not mastered by all the demons. There are demons that are lower class that are just simply there to torment and to terrorize. We also have demons. Um, and by the way, you know, we're body, mind, uh, we're soul and spirit. And, and so if, if you are a Christian, your spirit man, your spirit belongs to Jesus Christ. So when the demons come in, they come into your physical body, they come into your brain, they come into the actual body itself, and this is where they cause havoc. And by the casting out of demons, then these symptoms, these problems go away. And this is called deliverance. This is, or the, the world calls it an exorcism. But unfortunately, it is not exorcised. And so many, many people suffer from this issue. And I know that this is what you deal with, too, with the people that you pray for. Yeah, we certainly do. And I, the longer we live and the more we deal with things, um, we certainly are dealing with a complexity in the fallen world. Um, there are many different entities that function in different ways. And um, we, we can't, we're not going to understand it all, but... I'm convinced there is that complexity there. And when it comes to deliverance, um, when a person is coming to be delivered and they're at the point of confession and renunciation, 
what effect can electronic weaponry or exposure or whatever, what effect can that have in keeping the ground for that devil in place in the individual? Well, I, I brought out it again in the show that uh, a ministry that I worked in in Arizona for a while, that uh, the man who was running it was interested in the equipment that they use for paranormal research. So otherwise, when you have someone who's ghost chasing, uh, they used instruments that measure magnetic. They have electromagnetic, st uh, static electro. There's heat sensors. There's infrared monitoring. Um, otherwise, being able to see something in a different spectrum. And so he funded, and I purchased this equipment, and I set it up in the main delivery sanctuary where we would have group deliverance. And we would have 50 to 100 people on a Friday night or a Sunday night delivering masses of people. And you'd have thought the pits of hell opened up by all the screaming of the demons coming out of the people that uh, anyone walking by would have been terrified thinking that people were being murdered, but it was just the demons coming out. And I need to tell you that not once did any of this equipment measure any demonic activity, any action, any altercation, nothing. Well, if that's the case, then why do these paranormal individuals get all of these uh, instrument readings? They get the, the needle that moves. They get the LED bar that changes. Well, I came to the conclusion that these individuals who are paranormal investigators, most of them are New Agers, and they're not in Christ. So in, in their presence, just like uh, the sons of Sceva, where when the demon manifested, he says, Jesus, I know, Paul, I know, who are you? And then leaped into the to the I believe the father and the son and caused them to tear their clothes off and run naked down the street. That when you're operating in the blood of Jesus Christ, there is a protection that keeps the demons from acting out their ugly nature, keeping them from retaliating, ambushing or sabotage, keeping them from basically manipulating the electromagnetic spectrum when you're truly operating in the blood of Jesus Christ. When you're a bond servant, you're, you're doing exactly in the order, being God of a God of order, uh, what he's called us to do, there is a, quote, protection. So when someone comes to me and they need deliverance, and again, they may think they're being gang stalked, or they may think that they're um, being affected by uh, psychotronics, that in the breaking of the curse, and the casting out of the demon, that all of these effects go away, and the ringing of the ears, um, the, the visitations at night, the nightmares, the night terrors, all the things that gave the appearance of being gang stalked, including the target that was on their back were uh, the rage, uh, road rage uh, stops now. Uh, they get along with the clerk in the store that they didn't get along before because uh, the demons come in and they just play havoc. They work on our emotions. They, they cause people to, to be counter to each other. In fact, we see that in Scripture, uh, that uh, you know the love of many will wax cold, and there will be a separation of people, uh, you know, just uh, uh, father against uh, son and, and mother-in-law against uh, daughter, and, and it's going to be a circumstance that will be uh, devastating to us. But when we do deliverance, when we break the curses and we get the demons out, then these effects stop. So my point in this is that regardless, unless it's an energy wave that causes so much pain that you're taken to the ground, which will do to anybody, that any of the effects that come from the microwave towers that will come from the 5G that are part of mind control, that are part of... Um, uh, some type of uh, pain or reward system, I believe, uh, from what I've seen, uh, it's not going to happen. And this will be a part of the end times that the remnant few who stand in the authority and do what they're called to do, they, they are obedient and, and they're honoring God through, what the, through keeping of the commandments like the, the Great Commission, that there's a job to do. So 
it, it doesn't, you know, the, the amount of um, circumstances that I've run into over the years doing deliverance, that a lot of people are concerned that, you know, that I would be uh, injured, that I would be killed and so forth. And, and there's been many circumstances that could have led to that. But every time that there's been a conscious attack by the enemy, whether it's been electronic, whether it's been through demonized people, or those who are controlled either by spirits or by electronic means, um, I've been able to walk away from it. And so I believe that, uh, that uh, from, from what I've seen with all the deliverances that I've done, that that's the case that regardless of electronic uh, being used, that many of this will not be affected. We may, we may um, you know, take the slap across the face, but we're going to get up and we're going to dust ourselves off and we're going to come up swinging. And that's my goal is to get everyone ready for that. And I can't say it any plainer than that. Amen. Well said. And I'm going to ask Sister Donna to get ready to present questions to you uh, from our listeners. And as she's getting ready, Scott, once again, give out your contact information for our listeners. Okay. Well, again, uh, the two basic websites is my name, Scott Hensler, H-E-N-S-L-E-R, scotthensler.org. And then the main site that I'm working right now is tinfoilhatclub.com. And if you go to any of those sites, you can get the contact information. You can also get uh, the links to uh, my YouTube channel. And I have uh, one of my first books out was uh, called Second Heaven Invasion. The, the condensed version was called Hoodoo Voodoo. And what it is is it's a, basically a step-by-step Understanding of the spirit realm, understanding of the curses, understanding of deliverance, self-deliverance uh, to deliver your child. I've got a chapter on delivering children, chapter on delivering yourself, uh, spiritual warfare, understanding soul ties. That's another thing that really needs to be addressed uh, because of all the divorces that's taking place. And and so if you go to uh, the the tinfoil hat club that'll link you to the youtube you'll see 30 hours of an hour each dedicated to each chapter of the book second heaven invasion so if you haven't heard those yet they're all free obviously available uh, my book is out of print right now so if you email me uh, scott at scotthenser.com or dot org uh, and then request my book i will give it to you in pdf form and uh, that way you can at least print out uh, parts that you want. But in the back of those chapters, such as deliverance, are examples of how I pray, what I say, and in the order that I do it. And that's what I've been doing for many years with great success. And I'm just simply trying to, to pass it on to everyone else. Amen. That is fantastic. And I'm going to ask Sister Donna to come on now and... Uh, to give some of the questions from our listeners this evening. Okay. Um, CB actually had a sudden thought about the 5G network because there's five major religions, uh, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Hindu, and Buddhism. So the 5G will set the mind to be malleable towards ecumenicism, all religions deemed equal and no standards towards anything. So what do you think about that, Scott? Well, I know that the FCC is already allocating 6G, so it's not a number that's going to stop. But oh. when, it, when it comes to numbers, the occult is, is uh, well, that's how they live. That's, everything is based on the stars, the dates, the times, the number system, uh, gematria. If anyone's familiar with that, you can go to a gematria calculator online. If you come across numbers such as 5G, uh, put 5G in the Gematria calculator and see what you come up with. I, I think that uh, that'll that'll answer your question real fast. Okay, William wants to know what's the difference between the towers, such as cell towers. Um, uh, I guess they, cell towers and the 5G. I saw an article on um, Wikipedia, I believe, and it said that the 5G was supposed to be a little shorter. 
Mm -hmm. but I don't know if there's any other differences. Yes. Well, again, it's line of sight. So, so cell, cell phones are still microwave, but they're lower frequency. So they're able to go longer distance. They're able to penetrate through the walls. That's why you can use the phone in your house. But a 5G can't, cannot do that because it's so high in frequency. So height means nothing to it. So they can put it at ground level. They can put it on a light pole. It doesn't need to be the 100 feet in the air. And so, yes, there is a difference in it. That's why you're not really going to see it on cell towers. That's why you're going to see it more at a head height or no more than maybe 20 feet off the ground. Okay, well, uh, Valerie wants to know, um, when does 5G actually happen here in the USA, or has it already happened? Well, it, again, um, it's just equated to lighting a candle one at a time. Remember, it takes so many of these to, to complete the system. They have to manufacture them, and they have to install them. And we're talking about a multi-billion dollar project. So it is not in place everywhere by any means whatsoever. We're talking about a couple of years. And so there may be some areas that have it that have been part of the experiments. Like I say, San Diego was one of the test beds. But again, when it starts happening, you'll see these boxes, you know, again, 10, 20 feet off the ground, one around the corner, one on the fence, one on the light pole. They'll be everywhere. It's not going to be like cell towers. So you'll know it when it comes. Okay. And Valerie had a question about what you said about our protection from Yah, that uh, she thought you said we're not under the protection because of the curses. So could you explain that a little bit more? Well, we are in the protection because if, if Lucifer could wipe us out, he would have already done it. These demons would have just run us over like a steamroller. But a lot of us operate in what we call generational curses, meaning that the sins of our father, you may have had a Freemason grandfather, you may have had a grandmother, great-grandmother that was a practicing witch, and these were abominations. And these carry down through the bloodline, the sins of the father carry on to the first, four, third and fourth generation. So it doesn't mean that you're excluded. You have, still have the seal of God upon your forehead. Your name is still written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But you're operating in a deficit, meaning that you have that since the blood of Christ has been there to redeem us, otherwise the great commission to cast out demons and set the captives free and bind up the broken heart and set the captives, you know, in, in the ability to move forward in full authority isn't implemented because the church has stood down. They haven't taught the deliverance. They haven't brought in. Uh, they haven't allowed uh, basically God to, uh, to, to, to fill us up uh, with what we've been called to do. Everyone's got a calling. Everyone has the ability. But until you renounce, confess, repent, and get those sins broken off, the demons still have a legal right to you. The good news is that Jesus Christ gave us that ability, and that's called deliverance. Amen. And that's that simple. So. Yes, thank you so much, Scott. We've learned in our ministry many times people want to jump in and start casting out devils, but they do not deal with the groundwork of why that devil has the right to be there. So that's right. why we always start with a lot of the basic things, uh, you know, praying about uh, the doors that you've opened, um, objects you have in your home, things like that, that you have to do the cleanup work before you get down to do casting out devils a lot of times. So yeah, I have an example. Let me, let me give you a, there was a dear lady in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, her and her husband were just precious people of the Lord and um, their, their spouses died and they came together in their seventies and married and on their honeymoon, they went to Greece. Well, while they were in Greece, uh, the new, um, you know, husband, wanted to buy his bride a necklace. So he buys her a necklace in Greece that was made of gold, not really understanding the occult and the symbolism. And when they came back to the United States, she became so ill that she they almost lost her a few times. They could not figure out what was wrong with her. And I went to a Bible study and just happened to be there when, when they came in because they were searching for prayer. And uh, someone said to me, 
um, what do you think of the necklace? And I took one look at it, and I, and I just couldn't believe what I was looking at. And of course, they didn't know. They weren't educated on the occult. And I said, you need to get rid of that right now. You need to repent of it. They did. They, they melted it down and sold it off. And guess what? Uh, a year later, I saw that woman in the gym uh, working out like some 30-year-old. Mm -hmm. she, you know, she was someone that was going to be dead within a couple of months, and it was all a curse. And once that was broke off because of that jewelry, she, she completely came back. I, I know I told a lady one time to get rid of her Sparvosky crystal uh, necklace or bracelet she had bought. I couldn't figure out why, but I had been on the website and uh, had found some information. I don't know if it would still be up there, but I found out that there were a lot of, um, uh, well, let's see, questionable people that had been praying over that jewelry before it was ever sent out. So we always have to be aware of all the ways that the enemy can come in. Yes, yeah, jewelry, Indian jewelry can be that way too. Being, I, I, I was raised in Arizona, and and so the Navajo, the Hopi, the the, the Apache, uh, all of them making their jewelry and selling it within Arizona. Not that they had the intent, uh, like a witch would, to curse somebody, but they do pray spirits into it. And so many of the people who came in for deliverance, that was one of the entries was that jewelry. Yes, Amen. Allie wants to know, will 5G affect landlines at all? Are they planning to make landlines obsolete like they did local TV networks? Well, uh, the, the hardwire landline uh, is really already obsolete. A lot of the phones now are brought in by cable. You know, you've got uh, your cable network and you've got TV and you've got Internet and then you've got the IP type address phone. So landline will be around most likely all the time because there's so much money invested into it. But it also takes a lot of money to keep it going. You've got to repair it. You've got uh, water leaks. You've got ground that changes, you know, with the cable, buried cables. You've got lightning strikes. So it will be phased out, but it's going to take a long time. Okay. Um Amy has the question, do the EMF devices on the internet really protect us from EMF, uh, like the whole house EMF reducers? No, no. In, in fact, uh, I'm and I'm glad you brought this up. There are a lot of devices that people are selling on the internet that claim that they're able to give a shield of protection away from RMF, from uh, RF radiation. That's the, the electromagnetic frequencies. There is some uh, relief, there is some um, suppression, but as a whole, it does not, because radio waves come in in all directions. And unless you're completely shielded like a Faraday cage or a Faraday shield, you're still going to get radiated. Now, here's the other problem. Some of these devices uh, jam. Some of these devices counter, meaning that they're actually transmitters. And they're trying to fight fire with fire. They're trying to uh, null out the signal. Otherwise, um, there's devices they call anti-knock uh, anti devices on diesel engines. And it's a microphone built into the engine. And when it hears the engine knock, it actually, out of phase of the, of the, of the sound of the knock, reproduce it with a type of speaker, and it cancels out the noise. So you don't hear the knock in the engine because it's been canceled out. Wow. Well, this, this is kind of what they're trying to do. But here's the problem. That these devices, let's say that you knocked it off the table. Let's say that you bought it from the Chinese and they used inferior components. That in time, just from temperature changes in your room from winter to summer, that they can, they can alter frequency. Otherwise, they can come offline like you changed the channel on the TV and now you're on a different frequency. So now they can be radiating at you instead of helping you. And many of them are the lower frequencies that are supposed to help you, you know, become one with, uh, with, uh, the, with the earth, which uh, they call the Schumann resonance. What you need to understand about Schumann resonance at 7.86 or whatever it's at hertz, which is very low, that if you get up to 8 hertz, people have been driven into insanity. There was an apartment complex where a fan 
bearing went bad and it was resonating at eight hertz and people were jumping out of windows. People were shooting themselves. People's insides were becoming like jelly. It was a resonance that our human body is not able to tolerate. And so these devices that you buy, in my opinion, you've wasted your money and, and you didn't know, but many of them can be dangerous. So I am absolutely against it. The only thing that you're going to be able to do is to put yourself into a complete shield. Now, online with um, YouTube, you'll find some examples that people who are electromagnetic uh, sensitive, hyper-electromagnetic sensitive, make cages that they put around their bed. And it's, you know, cumbersome, it's unfortunate, but if you're not going to get a good night's sleep because you've got a cell tower down the road from you, that is the answer. And in my opinion, and from what I've seen and what I've dealt with, though that is the only answer. And when it comes to 5G, I'm going to be considering of making myself a Faraday cage uh, very much like the ones that you see on YouTube. So that's that's what I recommend. Well, speaking from a mechanic's daughter point of view, they might be able to get rid of the sound of that knock. They're only getting rid of the symptom. They're not really getting rid of the real problem that's okay. causing the knock, which is the same thing that happens with a lot of people with medications. Yes. Sometimes it gets rid of the symptoms, but it really doesn't cure the problem. That's right. Absolutely. And it's the same thing. Uh, with, uh, let's say that um, you have a demon of, um, well, I call them crazy makers. You ever had someone that you just can't be in relationship with because they're always causing trouble, they're, they're, they're troublemakers? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so you do something to get them uh, involved in, let's say, um, music or a hobby or try and, you know, point them in another direction. Well, you, you, they still have the demons. And there's so in time, they're going to turn back to being crazy makers. So you never resolve the problem until you remove the demons. You're always going to have the issue. Well, on this um, idea here, um, I know God doesn't want us to live in fear. So we really appreciate you, Scott, for sharing your knowledge with us so we won't be ignorant of it. However, uh, you've mentioned the cage. What are some practical things we can do to shield ourselves and our homes and can uh, we'd like to have some suggestions for a uh, prayer strategy too that we can pray about so just go ahead and share that if you would well um prayer strategy uh, I, again if someone's in sin we're reminded that that in your sin, that when you pray, God doesn't hear your prayers. And a lot of people can argue that and say, no, no, no. Well, gee, I found just the opposite. That when you get your life straightened out and, and you really truly become that bond servant, you've dedicated yourself, uh, that, is a, that, is, that completely turns things around. So if you're in an environment that is... Um, well, let me put it this way. Demons are opportunists. If you're being affected by radio waves and you already have a demon of anxiety, then they're going to ride the gravy train. They're going to hang 10 on the surfboard and they're going to use that electromagnetics to irritate you even more. In fact, they'll draw you into buy technology. They'll draw, draw you into uh, buying the home next to the cell tower They'll do things like that. You, you, it's not, as crazy as it is, that happens. So first off, get yourself right. Then your prayers will start to manifest in the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. And that way, if you are next to a cell tower, at least you've eliminated the demonic issue. And now it's in God's hand. I mean, that's what we're to do. When, if we're in a circumstance that is beyond our control, we have authority over demons, but we do not have authority over man. And whenever you have a human who, who is willing to do evil things, we have authority over the demons in them, but they still have the will to override and to come at you. That's why we have murderers. That's why we have rapists. That's why we have people who do things that you just shake your head and wonder why they would do it. So, that's, a, that's something that you need to go to your prayer closet and straighten it out with God, between you and God, and let God direct you. 
because I can sit here all day and give you examples, and it may be the exact opposite of what God's directing you. So. Well, and like we said, there's other things that can bring spirits into your home, usually yeah. three-dimensional objects. And, uh, you know, on uh, in our uh, ministry, David has been impressed uh, and uh, God has revealed some new prayer spread strategies and we have a uh, a playlist on our YouTube channel we call it new spiritual warfare so David did you want to just uh, just briefly touch on a, a few of those ways well what we have found is there's a cooperation that there are three heavens and there's a complexity of spirits in the first, second, and third heaven. And in binding of the powers in the second heaven, uh, in Job, it talks about binding the Pleiades. And there was from most ancient times an understanding that these Pleiades were a seat of dark power. And all through scripture, um, the stars are talking of, spoken of as actual um, angels and in the book of Enoch it talks about uh, the heavenly luminaries actually being moved by angels so uh, another one so we will pray to bind the Pleiades and also the Plantes uh, from the most ancient times back into the uh, the temple at Babylon there were seven levels of the temple that were aligned with the seven planets and the plantes. And in the book of Jude, it talks about these teachers being wandering stars or plantes under the influence of these powers in the second heaven. So we will specifically pray to bind these powers. And we have found this to be um, very, very effective. And we also pray about the connections to the astral plane. That's also another uh, way that we deal with issues. Um, let's see. I, Amy had a question about uh, when you said something about being mapped. What does that mean, being mapped? Well, we have personalities. We have our bio. So when your bio scanned, uh, there's also, I, I don't like the word aura, but there is a, a magnetic field around us that is, a specific or your signature of who you are and so when you've been mapped your mind's mapped on the basic process of your think or your thought process that's being mapped so so when you have a hundred people that are at a concert and they're in the cell phone tower range and as the waves go through everybody they can pick each individual out by the mapping or the signature of the person's bio so that's what it means. Okay. Rachel wants to know, um, is it better flip phones or just hardwired phones? Um, well, anything that's Wi-Fi is, is going to be bad. The wireless mouse, the Bluetooth that you got stuck to your head, uh, the cell phone in itself, I try and go hardwire, including the Internet. So my office or anything that I, that I have, uh, I, tr I do not use Wi-Fi. I stick with Ethernet. I stick with everything that uh, can give me data communication without wireless. The more you have that's wireless, the more affected you're going to be by the microwave. So, mm -hmm. Okay. Is there uh, any way to insulate your house to the 5G thing? No. No. Uh, that's the other thing. Um you would spend so much money. In fact, let me give you an example. I've lost contact with this older couple, and they were they definitely were one of the targeted individuals for the satellite um, uh, targeting. So they were they were being burned on a regular basis, and the wife figured it out. I gotta give her credit. She figured it out. She went online. And she looked at the satellite. Um, there's there's several programs that tell you what satellites or what and where they're at, when they're going to be over your head on orbit. And she figured out that there were two or three satellites that when they came 
within the range over her property, her and her husband were, were suffering from tremendous amounts of pain. They spent thousands and thousands of dollars, including lead shielding, to stop and block the microwave that was being transmitted by the satellites. I don't know why they were targeted. They, they had experts come in. Um, I don't know what the husband did. He, there was a time that they, they were very wealthy. They, they had the financial means. They literally spent their, their life savings to shield their home, and it was ineffective. So, and I've lost contact with them. I do not know what happened to them. Wow, to remember them in prayer. Yes. Um, Valerie wants to know about the smart meters. Uh, what do they do to us? Well, again, they're Wi-Fi, and they have two specific frequencies. Now, they're connected to the electrical grid for monitoring of the wattage, the voltage, you know, the, 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 the wattage hours or kilowatt hours that you consume. But they're also a relay device like the transponder that I talked about for 5G. And so when you have smart devices in your home, like your TV, your dishwasher, or any of the others, it uh, rebroadcasts the signal from these devices to the power um, receiving stations. And so that means that they're a Bluetooth device or frequency device on that range. And then they have another transmitter that transmits the signal from your home to as much as 30 miles away. So that means they're fairly high powered. So now you're getting the Bluetooth Wi-Fi bombardment, and now you're getting another frequency range at high power. So there are many, many people that live in apartments who never thought about this, but on the other side of their wall were 30, 20, 50 meters, because that's where the electrical came into the apartment complex, and their life was upside down. They couldn't sleep. Um, their immune systems were shot. So uh, smart meters, again, are part of this uh, terrorizing, basically, of humanity. Now, if there is smart meters in a complex, and um, like we live on the second floor, but mm -hmm. I think the smart meters are down in the basement. How the much? The further you are away from them, the better that it is. Well, that's uh, the, the people again that that are you know would have had it on the other side of the wall, they're in what we call the near field, and that means they're in the highest point of radiation, and that's um, that's a very terrible situation. So the further you are away, the better you are. Okay, what about these um, machines I've seen on YouTube, and they advertise that you get this machine, you hang on to these two poles. And you receive uh, frequencies, and then uh, you know you've actually uh, get electric things running through your system. Plus, you put on a headset, and you hear these frequencies. Is mm -hmm. there anything that really works about that, or are they all just well? That that isn't really to to. They may say it, but it's not. The original idea was to try uh, and to get your body back into the Earth resonance. There was a time that we didn't wear shoes and we walked on the earth. Our feet were planted. We neutralized to the magnetics or the electrical field of the earth. We don't do that anymore. We're on concrete. We're on rubber. And so our static charge, our bodies become um, out of balance to the normal magnetic field in the earth. And so the process of trying to neutralize you back to the same uh, polarity as the earth um, has lividity it has uh, truth but unfortunately that the occult also uses this to try and do astral traveling try and connect with spirits and so I don't recommend it if you if you don't know where it came from and you don't know what you're doing don't mess with it okay Ali wants to know um, is DARPA uh, brain mapping somehow involved in all this 5G revolution? Well, DARPA is the engineering behind all the military weapons that uh, blow up things and kill people. So they were the pioneers in this technology. So yes. Okay, what about these um, 
cars that have the OnStar thing. Like when you get in trouble, you can just punch a button and get connected. I, can they? Is this connected to the five G stuff? And can they control your car? Well, it's not connected to the five G. It's connected by satellite and some of the the later systems by cell phone. Now that there's enough cell phone towers. Um, they can lock you out of your car. They can keep your car from starting. So if there is martial law declared, anyone who has OnStar will find that their vehicle is useless. So if you, and plus they track you this way too. And the insurance companies uh, looking for speeders uh, because they can now see how fast you're going. They're, they're looking at charging you for carbon taxing because you've driven so many miles. Most people that are aware of this just go in and disconnect uh, OnStar. I, I don't want it. I'll never have it in my vehicles. Amen. Well, praise God we have cars that run most of the time, but they're not new ones. So, <laughs> um, okay, you mentioned uh, uh, something about necromancy. So Allie wants to know, does this mean the craft is real, right? Not that the dead are really communicating. Uh, you're not denying that there's actually demons speaking, right? Yeah, it's necromancy. Um, the familiar spirit is one that leads you to believe that you're talking to Uncle Joe. They lead you to believe that your dog uh, that you had as a boy comes and visits you. The whole thing is a scam to get you you know, the iniquitous pull into the behavior of committing uh, divination. And this is an abomination. So the whole thing's a lie, but it is evil spirits. And, and when we say familiar spirits, they've been in your family. So they know your bloodline. They knew your father. They knew your grandfather. And so they know, and they're very intelligent. Um, and so they know how to fool you to think that you're talking to uh, grandma. So. Okay. And I had a question. What about our old teeth fillings? Can, they, can this 5G be use somehow i know i've heard that it's bad to have mercury fillings but i well, want to yeah mercury in itself uh when you chew and you bite down there's actually mercury gas released every time that you that you eat so the removing of mercury should be done anyways but any metal within your body will be conductive and you know that um if you go in and get a cat scan you know get an mri uh, the electromagnetic field in that is so powerful that if you have any metal in you at all, let's say you have a chip, a uh, metal chip in your eye and you didn't know it, you literally could drive the chip through your brain. So metal is something we need to remove from our bodies. And, and uh, you know, we, we've got the normal uh, minerals that we should have of copper and, and so forth, but those are uh, what we call colloidal. The meaning that it's not in the mineral form like an ore or, or a ferrous metal. Uh, so if you have anything that's ferrous in it, meaning magnetic or, or, or susceptible to be magnetized, uh, we need to get rid of all that. And when you mention ferrous, that makes me think of iron. So mm -hmm. what if you have to take iron supplements and things like that? Well, again, it should be in colloidal form. If you want to look that up, what you'll find is plants, when they upload metals in the ground, um, they're able to convert, convert it into a form that your body can absorb. So I'm actually talking about the, the metals that would condense and accumulate that do you no good. So you have gallstones, kidney stones. These are remnants or um, uh, masses that have come together that... Uh, are too overwhelming for your system to remove. And of course, you know how painful those things can be. So colloidal is, is, the, is the way to go when it comes to any of these forms of bringing in uh, iron or copper or any of the others uh, that uh, are beneficial to us. Okay, Alec wants to know, in the, act, in the event of the activation of 5G, would this be fulfilling of uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 3? For when they say they have peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Well, I, I, I don't know, but I, I don't think so. I, I think that um, 
that something like this would be more of an energy weapon, more of an atomic issue. Um, again, um, you know, uh, Putin mentioned that the super soldier, uh, the hybrid, is actually more dangerous or more terrifying or more destructive than nuclear weapons. Well, how can that be? A nuclear bomb goes off, it kills a million people in one shot. But if you release, let's say, a million hybrids, the terror in itself that would coming to the death over a hybrid uh, would be a long would be a longer death, a more terrifying death, and that's the destruction that he was talking about. So it's kind of up in the air what what it really means, but unfortunately, I, in time, we're going to find out. Okay, Alec had a question. Would living in the mountains protect us? Seeing that Yeshua told his followers to flee to the mountains when they saw the event he warned them about. Absolutely. The propagation of radio waves. Now, micro, or microwave that comes from satellites is a different animal because it has an overhead effect of shooting straight down onto you. But if you're in the mountains, mountains are made of what? Metal or uh, full of forest, full of trees, uh, even in the deserts with the low shrub, those absorb, those block, those hinder radio waves. So living in the mountains, living in an area that does not have uh, the buildup of uh, cell towers and all the other communication is a plus. That is my goal. In fact, um, I feel so much better when I'm up in the mountains and get behind and away from all of the stuff in the towns. So, yes. All right. Caesar has a question. Uh, are you familiar with the news uh, aircraft, the Malaysia Airlines, Rothschilds making 100% of a revolutionary patent on semiconductors, liquid metal, and robots in 2014 and now in 2018? And now the electromagnetic activity uh, a Twitter has been deleted without permission, which said danger is serious for you to evacuate, to be cautious. Um, in other words, um, you know, is there anything to this uh, Rothschild? Well, the Rothschild bankers, um, they, the, the amount of uh, money that they have, and they have their hands in just about everything, um, I'm not familiar exactly with that statement, but um, the technology of craft that we have today with the ability that in its operation in itself, just like uh, weaponized cell towers, any of this stuff uh, is going to be an issue and a problem. But that specific um, reference to that I'm not familiar with. Okay, Alex has another question. Um but can't we clean our pineal gland by decalcifying it with nacreous iodine uh, X2 by um, Infowars? I know they recommend iodine supplements. Does Yahweh want us to have a clean, decalcified pineal gland? Absolutely. Again, you know, the 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 generations prior to us were not exposed to any of this. And the generations prior to us, if, if they were to see the way we behave and what we allow to take place, they would be horrified. And I think the dumbing down of society has been through that uh, particular means because there's so many people now who have rejected God, will never accept God. And I believe that that was one of the tools used in order to block the masses from being able to comprehend uh, who God is. I have a friend who recently got uh, copper bracelets. I've seen him advertised to uh, try to help with uh, arthritis pain. And there's been an influx of a lot of copper products um, and even jewelry, uh, like I said, for joint pain. Mm -hmm. um, is that good or bad? Well, the properties of copper can have a effect on electromagnetics. Copper is non-ferrous, meaning that, that uh, magnetics, magnets do not stick to it. So its own property and its structure, its molecular structure, seems to have relief for arthritis, seems to have something that is a benefit. My question would be, who did you buy it from? Did they pray over it? Did, did they put emblems on it? So again, be very cautious of stuff like this. 
Okay, well, that was our last question. So um, did you have anything else you wanted to share before we end the program? No, just uh, just understand that regardless of the information tonight, God is in control. And, yeah. and we need to rely on him, corporately come together and petition for divine intervention for all of this stuff. And by, by what has happened to the churches and by uh, just uh, the, the, um, the attempt to uh, take anyone that's, that's of a nature that, uh, of God, they have just uh, tried to do their best to keep us from, from being who we are. So turn to who you are in Christ, and that, uh, I just say Jesus plus nothing. So. Am I back? There, Scott is back. <laughs> well, my my the the basis of what I just said was uh, Jesus plus nothing. Amen. Amen. That is very 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 good advice. Well, uh, I don't see John here. I um, sent him a message, so maybe he'll be back here in a second. All right, he should be, so we can close this show out. And I just want to thank you once again, Scott, for a fantastic program. Uh, tremendous information and tremendous spiritual balance and great information and great advice for believers here in the last days. So thank you so much for okay. a fantastic broadcast. Okay. Thank you. All righty. Well, could uh, we just go ahead and why don't we just close in prayer, David um, and Scott, it. for the uh, many people that are targeted and for people that are being affected by this can we just close out in prayer we absolutely can i know we have many targeted individuals and many sra people and uh that are listening and uh all of us that are concerned with these issues so why don't you just close out the broadcast with a word of prayer scott all right thank you All right, Scott is back again. All right, right when you began to pray, right. Scott, look at that. You clicked out. Who'd have thought it? So go right ahead. All right, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for who you are, and I thank you for the gift of your Son, and we invite the presence of the Holy Spirit. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, anyone that is under spiritual attack, anyone that is under anxieties or fear, in the name of Jesus Christ, 2 Timothy 1.7, we have not been given a spirit of fear, but a power and love and of sound mind. And so, fathers, we corporately come together and petition in agreement, two or more, that in the name of Jesus Christ, we pull down strongholds. We will not, in the name of Jesus, accept any retaliation, ambush, or sabotage. And so, Father, I just ask that your peace comes upon all of us. And under Psalm 91, you take us under your wing. And as we move forth in the name of Jesus Christ in obedience, that you bless us. And as your hand is upon us, divinely guide us to your will. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, high five, everybody. God bless you. And we'll see you next Saturday night on the Midnight Ride. Okay.